Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lambermont Weber. And today we have truly an extraordinary guest who's accompanied by 32 plus four other extraordinary guests, at least in um, spirit. Uh, Mr. Raymond Kosolandich. Did I get that correct? Kosolandich. That's fine. Kosolandich. Uh, who's coming to us from South St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome, Ray. Well, thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> father, you said? I got my dad I got my dad on my mind. Oh, oh, oh. oh right, right. I, I know, I know. This is going to be a, a truly extraordinary uh, interview. And in the wings, uh, not on camera, is Mr. Joe Palermo, who is the chief UN UFO investigator for Missouri MUFON. Right. And uh, uh, so uh, Ray and I have been in conversation for over a year. And uh, we'll be sharing a series of uh, uh, images of 32 plus entities that Ray has been in contact with and this has occurred over three generations. So uh, Ray, why don't you start by giving us a picture going back to your grandfather in Yugoslavia and his first contacts with what you've come to know as the star beings. Okay. Yeah, back uh, in Yugoslavia, my grandfather was a lumberjack, and my grandfather, my grandmother would uh, give him like five sandwiches. He'd have his cup of coffee. When he'd take a break, he'd sit on his stump, and out of the woods would come this 12-inch all-colored clothed dwarf and sit on his stump. But my grandfather, my grandfather would give him a sandwich, and he would talk. <laughs> uh, my uh, grandfather had four kids, and... Uh, He'd speak Croatian, Yugoslavia, that's the language they would speak. So I guess his wife wouldn't hear it, but he was trying to tell his boys what this little 12-inch dwarf was saying. And one of the things that the little dwarf was saying that one of your sons and one of your grandsons would be chosen people. Hmm. And, uh, my, my dad was in planet at five years old. My very first... Uh, encounter was 12 years old 1959 and uh, just to make a long story short my dad knew he wasn't alone he had somebody to uh, console with and we would go in the backyard and have these meetings with my mom and my older brother and sister to this day Excuse me, I, I I'm 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 getting like a water spigot going is that yeah I hear it too I don't know what that is oh okay okay I I think it's yeah. some kind of outside noise but let's yeah. go through it yeah that's what it is but anyway uh i didn't realize where we were actually going to go meet the star people that was the first thing that came out of my mouth at 12 years old they don't like to be called aliens they're star people but what he did he went grocery shopping he thought more of his wife than et at the time and we got all the groceries the two loaves of bread and we went and uh the car died and they're coming to the car to get us and taking us on this giant flying saucer because they put me in one room and him in the other room and they were scraping and taking semen from us and uh, I, I looked up at the ceiling I was on this metal bed and it was with this yellow like blanket coming from the ceiling and it came over me I was my head was showing in my my feet and I was trying to punch through it because I knew my dad was going through the same thing I was 12 years old I was real scared but after they were done, they put us in this room. We had black and white TV back in the day. We didn't have color TV. And here come this color TV floating in the air in front of me and my dad. It showed Hitler, the wars, and our beautiful planet falling on fire. And I was only 12 years old, so my dad was asking him questions. Did we have war with you? Did the sun fall? You know, they're not saying nothing. And through this whole lifespan, because it's all to me now, it was an education for us to figure out, as humans, what we needed to do. So uh, 
as this went on, uh, I met a total of 32 star people, 28 good, four bad. My dad, my late father, met half of them, but he didn't meet the ones I call my fab four. They're not the Beatles. They're the Serpo Grays and Silver Suits from the planet Serpo. They're the Nardiques. His uh, wife's usually on the crap a lot. They've got blonde hair. They look just like us. And uh, you could put a T-shirt and jeans on them. You wouldn't even know it. And uh, But they're real friendly. They speak our language. They look just like us. The other ones is the elephant people. They're from the 13th and 14th dimension. Your people see their picture. And my very first encounter, I know it's going to be hard to believe, my little three-inch humanoid buddies from the fifth and seventh dimension. What happened... Three inches tall. Three inches tall. I had them on my forearm, my hands. They floated in front of me. See, my name's Ray Raymond. They call me Raymond. Uh, my dad's first name was Rudy. They called him Ruda. But um, they're the neatest things you'd ever want to meet. They have the power to make some of the crop circles. It takes them about seven to ten seconds. They also have the power to shrink you to their size because they really want me to go to their planet. But I have a cat. My name is Jerry Lee. And as a human, I would love to go. But if I came back three inches tall, my cat would probably be chasing me all around my apartment trying to kill me and eat me. So, but uh, the Nordiques, if, if I was going to go to a planet, which down the road that may happen, just to get just get educated, I would do that. Because these people have been my friends for over 50 years. Right. Now, now, what's extraordinary is that is that at one point you made the decision to to actually document them and to make a a uh, a series of drawings right of your interactions or, or of them right uh, and to document them for the world who 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 helped you in this a uh, person by the name of Jeannie Blankenship she's a healer and uh, a spiritual Indian. She's a real good friend of mine. I have my meetings of First Money of every month, and I've, she's one of my speakers. She spoke at my at the Bolognese. I have my meetings at uh, quite a bit. I have quite a few speakers. It's a safe haven for people to come to because I got people that have uh, intervention of star people. I've had women in there that have uh, hybrid children. Uh, there's a lot of people that come to my meetings uh, where you can't go outside and talk about this other than people thinking you're nuts because uh, we got to watch what we're saying. Uh, I don't really care. This is my life, and I'm doing this for my late grandfather, my father, and the people on this planet. I'm not in it for fame and fortune, Alfie. Right, right. Now, you've given us permission... <clears throat> To actually air the uh, the uh, drawings of these beings and uh, <clears throat> to go through them uh, and examine uh, uh, their uh, exophino typology, which basically is, is a word for uh, the physical appearance of extraterrestrials and. And so, would it be okay for us to uh, embed the images? Do we have permission to embed the images of these uh, extraterrestrials and, and and interdimensionals in in the actual video? Is that okay? Yeah, you definitely have my permission. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Um, yeah, yeah, we're also going to uh, put a link in the video description, which will go straight to uh, a PDF that the people who want to download it, would that be okay? That's fine. Yeah. There's, not, there's something I'd like to throw in there that I forgot that, that is major. Uh, when we went to, uh, to see our first uh, meeting with uh, Star People, uh, we came back to the car, everything there, was, but the bread, the two loaves of bread they took. Now, a little 12-year-old kid, 
that lit up a light in my brain. And when we went, went back to the yard where me and my father would talk, that's when I told my dad, I go, Daddy, next time we go see the star people, we bring bread. My dad laughed. <laughs> Second time, he took five loaves of bread. Third time, he took seven. My dad didn't laugh no more. It was a peace offering now, Albert, Albert, that we never had missing time. We always knew what was going on. Now, from zero one one when I was born to 11 years old, I have no idea. My dad's had missing time, but at age 12, 1959, he never had missing time with me. He always knew what was going on. And uh, I just wanted to point that part about the bread in there because it was really important. Right. Right. Th th thank you. Now, let's, um, let's start with, with the first um, image, uh, image number one. And I... And I wondered if you could just briefly hold that drawing up, up, up to the camera. Yeah, yeah. Just put it, put it, put it straight up there. Okay, good. So, uh, what is what is that drawing? You, you say the you say the one-eyed people. The one-eyed cyclops people. <clears throat> They're from the fourth dimension. These guys are eight to ten feet tall. They fly in a giant orange egg-shaped object. Uh, if they had an extra eye, they'd be close to Bigfoot, but not that much close. These people are really, really brilliant. And, uh, when, and when me and my dad first met them, I was 12 years old at the time, but uh, later on in, in, in the late 60s and 70s when I was a lot older, these are friends of mine, they were friends of my dad. We, we thought we, we bit the farm. We thought we weren't coming back. We thought these guys were going to tear us apart. But they talked telepathically, and they said, we are your friends. And they had information for us to take back. Uh, we, you know, we're nobody. We're your average person. And uh, what they, these are watchers and protectors of our planet. They have bases underground here on Earth. They're, they're here to protect us. And they're concerned about our planet. They're concerned about us. And uh, we need to turn everything around. And they know we're going to do it. But at the first meeting with them, this is what was said to us. And, and they said that they were based where? Uh, underground uh, on our planet. No, no, no. But I mean, otherwise. Are, is that okay. their... Yeah. Well, they're, they're from the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension. Okay. See, we would ask, planet, try to get any answers. A lot of them would just say dimension. Some of them came from faraway galaxies. A lot of them gave the uh, dimension, and a few of them only gave the actual planet they were from. And you'll you'll see that as we go through this. Yeah. So it, in in terms of the five W's that we talked about, who, what, when, where, and why. Um, they actually uh, uh, met with you and your father because you were designated as third generation chosen people really to communicate this to right. others. Yeah. And uh, did you meet them more than once or? Uh, three times uh, later on in 1969 uh, by myself and uh, about the early 70s and uh, they were just checking with us and letting us know that in case anything happened a lot of them we have a lot of friends out there that are programmed to protect and uh, we got some that are <clears throat> uh, protectors of the universe and planet earth and as we go through this i'll be able to talk a little about each one sure. you. yeah now uh how exactly and where exactly did you quote meet them? Did did you get signals, telepathic <clears throat> signals to go meet them someplace or what? It would all be telepathic. When my father was alive, uh, he'd get a telepathic message from them, and they would use the words line four zero s, which would mean mean in our place we got uh, three or four highways, highway forty. S would be south, so we'd head south, 
and this is in the wee hours because it was always nighttime uh, encounters. And the craft would come across the car, it would blink twice. We knew it was that, whoever it was. And then the next exit was ours, whether it would be a winding road or straight, they, they were there. We could see them off the right. The car would die. They're coming to get us, and we, whatever craft we were going to. But a lot of times, through my late grand, grandfather saying we were going to meet many, we didn't know because some of the crafts that you'll see that Jeannie drew are weird looking crafts. These are large giant crafts, by the way. And uh, it's the people we would meet that were, I guess, some kind of group meeting they had out there. Uh, me and my dad used to laugh because we used to think that the people get the word that were called the bread man because we were giving bread to everyone we met. And uh, we didn't have any missing time, and it was a piece of offering for us to come back because we met some hideous people, plus four bad people in here that you're going to see. Right, right. Um, so ju just to ask you a question that really applies to, uh, did you ever, in, in this meeting or others, were, were you ever intercepted by, uh, like, uh, military or police or anything no uh the only time the military was ever in my life and that was uh, uh 2011 I, I spoke at uh, <clears throat> uh margie k she's the assistant director of move in kansas city and uh, debbie zingemeyer is the missouri director of move on she's also an aborted director she went with me to, and uh see i have to get this information out because it's all me but anyway, make a long story short, uh, my little three-inch guys in the Nordiques, wherever I go to speak, they follow. The people can't see them, but they, they want us to get this information out. And after everything was done, me and me and Debbie were getting tired, and I said, we gotta, we got to go. As we're going down Highway 70 to go home, there's a lot of farmland. There is a military base not too far from uh, Kansas City there. But anyway, this big white light just lit up the whole farmland. And then uh, about five minutes later, she's got this giant uh, Jeep with this tarp. Something hit the top of her tarp and just swayed this Jeep. She almost lost control. And Debbie right away said, that was a bird. I can't say what I want to say, but I said, a freaking bird, Rodan. Now, when I got home, because I was trying to catch the last 45 minutes of coast to coast, well, like I said, my little guys call me Raymond. And I was laying down, and my TV's off, because they're real high-pitched, and they sound something like this. Raymond, Raymond, Raymond. So when I went to TV, there's, there's usually eight, when I, when I meet them anyway, eight, eight. Three inch guys. They're letting me know that that they were there and that they saw me and heard me get the information out. And they would talk to me later and then went off on TV. I went to lay down. That's when I heard these helicopters. I live on the second floor, so when I went out, they shine their beam of lights on me. They went off real quick, and I could see U.S. Army. And they went in a single file. There was five of them. And took off. That was the only time the government's ever been in my life. They've never been at any of these secret meetings with the star people. Right. Now, as far as anybody seeing them in the sky, for them, you no, know, it was always a secluded, different place every time we meet them. Right, right. Um, okay, good. Uh, are there any other? Are there any other remarks that you'd like to say about uh, the one-eyed people? The other thing I want to say is they're all going to be here for the big day. Uh, for for what now? The big day for uh, visitation contact. But what your people have to understand, it's a, it will be an event that will cause this. Now, big, now, what exactly is the big day? The big and, day yeah. 
is the is, is the visitation contact uh, we we as humans it's our time to evolve we're going to go from third dimensional to the fourth dimensional we're going to go from a carbon to a crystal liquid as far as uh, us humans we're used to a date and time down here they're used to an event for any major thing to happen from them they don't just intervene on us uh, what I get from my fab four the only thing I can say to you and your audience is the major year of what happens there I don't know but it's a major year for us is 2017 uh, as, as much as I've been in this for over 50 years that's the date myself that I look for possible visitation contact the thing that was told to me by my fab four is when that happens it won't be for a day they're going to be here they're going to be working with us we're going to, we're going to be learning new technologies and when all that's said and done when that does happen then many will come and they will be the good ones and what I want your people to understand out there, we have good and bad here. There's good and bad out there. But the good outweigh the bad. There's a Galactic Federation Union with 300 other worlds in it. Um, Tolly, you know about Tolly. He's got the, the Andromeda Council with 12 planets. They can't wait for visitation. And uh, But it's going to take an event to cause this. And when they do come in our atmosphere, they want everybody on this planet to see these uh, crabs. Now, uh, what, what, when you say event, what kind of an event? Uh, from what I understand, it could be an asteroid. If it is this asteroid that they're talking about, it's not going to hit the planet. It's, it's going to go by Mars, our planet, and this would cause magnetic earthquakes. What I'm waiting to see is unbelievable changes not our earthquakes mudslides uh, typical things that we see down here as humans this would be unbelievable changes that I know we're getting real close uh, to contact visitation the other thing I want to say in there this craft that is contact visitation it goes to all the worlds okay there's 5,000 crew on this craft, 30 different races, and uh, they're going to be accompanied by the uh, Procidians uh, that are in two giant flying saucers the size of cities to uh, just kind of make sure nothing happens. Uh, We've had reptilians running the show down here for many years, and uh, they've had the beacon so low, <clears throat> and our frequency so low. We use like 14% of our brain, so they were kind of running the show. But these Procidians, what I found out, I never met these good ve vegetarian reptilians. They helped them, because uh, they knew the weakness of the Hydra and Draco reptilians that you'll meet in these drawings. They had bases down here with the Orion Grays, and I think it was January, February 2011. They shot a sonic blast. It wasn't like the way they would really do it, where you know, be like Star Wars, it would be even worse. And what they they killed a lot of the reptilians and Orion uh, Grays in the bases, but it caused a 5.0 earthquake. What they were concerned about that they may have killed some of the humans and uh, there's only 250 reptilians left in this planet and uh, like I was saying the people I meet every I meet my fab for every two months for vital information and uh, you know it's, it's our time as humans to evolve and they want to make sure that we go through this smooth without any interruptions from what I got from them, this was supposed to happen 368 years ago. So, so that would have, yeah, yeah. So that would have been uh, uh, like in the 1600s. Oh yeah, 
One thing I want to stress to your people and to you, Alfred, is I'm just a messenger. Yeah. This has been my life for over 50 years. I'm not an artist. That's why I got Jeannie. It took me six months to find her. Yeah, I am. These people well, are... Well, what, what I find very interesting is that, for example, uh, UFO and ET researcher Mary Rodwell in Australia, mm -hmm. she researches the, the young children who go up on the craft at night <clears throat> and then... Uh, are back down during during the day, and they're all converging on the year 2017 as well. So we'll see. Now there have been dates come and go. So, but still the process goes on. Right. Yeah. The biggest thing is, uh, it's going to happen. You know, it's our time as humans to evolve. You, you got to remember when the reptilians what they did. Mars, Moon, planet Earth, they, they, they got the frequency so low, we were controlled. You know what we've been going through, people, you know, they were even killing us. Um, their agenda was this, the entire Milky Way, there's 20 planets, humanoid planets that look like us. You know, they got different hair, different color eyes and this and that. And uh, planet Earth, we would have all been rip reptilians. And remember, the bad ones that come down are the Amanaki, Illuminati, the list goes on. They're here to control and get rid of us humans. It's the good ones that come that I've met out of the 32. And they outweigh the bad. Right. They're going to make sure that we, us humans go through this. It's our time to evolve. We're going we're gonna to change from a carbon to a liquid. Just think of this, Alfred. You're going to appear to look 30, 35 years old. The women are going to appear to look 20, 25 years old. You're going to be tall, slimmer. No, you're going to be a crystal liquid. Right, right. Well, let's, let's put that in one kind of parallel track over here. And let's stick with going through the, uh, the uh, 32 and then plus the fabulous four. Mind you, we're 27 minutes into the program and we've just gone through one type. So I'm going to go through these quickly and I might push you through because otherwise we're going to have a six hour program. Okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Now we'll, I, just, you know, we'll, just, go through, we'll just go through the characters. Oh, okay, okay. Now look. Uh, I'm now looking at the star woman, the the star woman is that? Yeah. Okay. Could could okay. you hold the uh, the uh, star woman? Okay. Now tell us about the star woman. Okay, these women are <clears throat> seven feet tall. They're in a blue jumpsuit. They have a star emblem that uh, relates to their planet. They have ray guns. Um, they they're either dark hair, blonde hair, pale skin. Slanted eyes. They look just like us. There's actually some down here. They're from another galaxy. You know, they got a pair of jeans, blouse on. You wouldn't even know they're star people. There's a lot of star people down here, besides the ones that aren't underneath the ground on planet Earth. But uh, these women are. Do I need to show this anymore? No, no. That, yeah, yeah. We will. We'll also they're, show it at the beginning of this segment. Okay. They're uh, real friendly. They've uh, they love our planet. They've been down here a long time, and uh, they have bases here. Uh, they're also uh, in the position to protect us humans from uh, any harm. What I've really been getting the information is uh, the star people are going to intervene on everything now. Uh, I'm going to cut it short. They've uh, been trying to talk to our higher ups for a long time, and now they're going through the people. And for everybody out there that thinks I'm nuts, I don't care. I've no, 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 no. Listen, just stick, stick with the facts. You, you know, don't, don't, don't project other people's that's, opinions that's, or 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 what you think. Now, okay. that's it uh, on her. Yeah, no, no, no. But wait, how would you meet the star woman, for example? 
again, a telepathic message that we were get, get or I would get when I met him two other times. Uh, you know, they'd have line um, 44 East, whatever it be, Highway 44. And uh, we would, I would go meet them, and uh, they would do the same thing. The craft would come across the car. Yeah. To, to, the signal was the lights would blink twice. Next exit, I'd get off, car would die, and this weird craft would be there. Yeah. And then now, they were there. Right, right. Now, I, I'm just going to ask you basic exopolitical questions. Did you ever get the sense that, say, this is a basic, say, a gray race, and they have, they can put on like suits and they, they can like camouflage them, themselves to appear as a one eyed people and appear as a star woman. Did you ever get, get the sense that this is, say, a basic gray race that is, that is in one interaction appearing? as a one-eyed people and then in another interaction appearing as a star woman simply because all of the other facets of the, of the contact are so similar. No, the, we touch these people, or I touch these people. Uh, the other thing, we're not spacesuits. I'm on my t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. They're, in their, they're in their, you know, spacesuits, whatever yeah. they are. No, they're real. They're, they're not fake. They're not what, you know, you were yeah. thinking in disguise as anything because the Orion Grays are in here. Okay. You know, grays. Yeah. Yeah. I know what something that is not what it, it is to be. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I I I'm just asking because we have contactee reports of people that have been on gray ships. These aren't bad grays, these are good grays. Okay. And they've been on gray ships and uh this was a great scientist, and they went into their uh, their laboratory there, and they looked, and they had a bunch of human bodies. They looked like human bodies hang, hanging up like overcoats. And they asked, what's that? And they said, oh, that's my human body. And they can just put it on and get yeah. beamed down, and they walk around inside what looks like a human body. And no, so, would so be, uh, yeah. There so, be, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. There would be more, more than one uh, star woman on its craft. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's let's go on. And did did they have any special message for you? The no only message thing for 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 the, the world or anything they had was like these others that we're going to meet was uh, we're here to protect humans. Uh, we're concerned about your planet. And uh, we need to turn everything around. They know about the greed and disease. About and what? The greed and di greed and disease down here. Oh yeah. Okay. And what their concern is for us, this was the big message: stop the wars, stop the nuclear power plants, anything nuclear. Right. And one reason was when they're doing these. Uh, testings, bombings, whatever, it gets into the dimension, it gets into them, and uh, that's why you hear, see these UFOs flying over uh, military bases. Right. And, uh, but the biggest thing is to, uh, for us to stop what we're doing, quit spraying our food, and turn everything around, or we're going to be extinct like the dinosaur. Okay, good. Okay, let, let's go on to the next, the the uh, monk people. Monk people. <clears throat> These guys are six to seven feet tall. Okay. They're in these uh, brown robes with these uh, red stars. They got seven fingers, seven toes. They got suction cups on their fingers. They fly in a giant uh, birthday size cake flying saucer. Wow. And they have uh, blue uh, pupil eyes, kind of black around the, the blue. But they uh, talk telepathic. These guys are probably a million years of technology. Hmm. They're real friendly. They're ball-headed. Um, 
my dad met my late father met these people uh, i met them two other times you know it's always a summertime you know it's uh -huh. never never been in the winter time but uh it's the same information as we go through this other than the the the, the bad ones i'll i'll, I'll bring out what uh the right. good ones. these people are got bases down here they're they're going to be ready to intervene when the time comes for when all of this does especially visitation you know uh i'm just giving this year 2017 so we just gotta wait and see what happens now did they say where they're from these guys are from another dimension they didn't give their planet a lot of them wouldn't give you know uh oh i'm sorry correct the monk people they're from the 15th dimension 15th dimension 15th. okay what i was getting at there's a lot of people that wouldn't give their dimension Right. Uh, and kind of saying the same thing as the other good ones were saying. And then uh, their telepathic would be the same way. I've had them come on my TV. My TV's off. And there'll be like a green mist around the inside of the TV with them on it, uh, talking telepathically. When I go in my car, I, my car, my radio will be off. They'll come on my radio. Uh, but it be the information of going on one of the highways, whatever direction to meet. And same thing, the craft would blink the lights twice. These are different crafts. They're not the same crafts. They're never in the same location for the meeting. The meetings are never in the same location. I've been all over Missouri. I know. But they picked the right spot. Oh, the one thing I would tell you is when the, when the the car stop stops and so let's say it's uh eight o'clock we're just playing a game right it's eight o'clock in the evening yeah when i'm done i'll look for a quick trip or a bank that has a clock so it will let me know how long i was on that craft and i got you. I all my stuff down in my notebook right right okay let's uh okay so now uh we're looking at the blue warriors so right. if you could bring that up and just uh, the blue that? warriors, are these names that that you gave them or that they give themselves? They give to me. Okay. Or my late father. And what, and what can you tell us about them? <clears throat> these guys are already down underneath. They have bases underneath planet Earth. They're programmed to protect us and defend us whenever the time comes. Uh, these guys are from the eighth dimension. They fly in a square with all red, white craft, a beautiful lit up craft at night. It's real huge. Uh, they got uh, four fingers. These guys are real husky built. They're eight to 10 feet tall. Uh, they talk telepathically. They're real friendly, and uh, it's it's kind of the same message, like I've been saying to your audience and to you. That, you know, each one that whatever this dwarf said to my late grandfather, we were going to get visited by many, and uh, my dad met half of them. I met a total of 32, 28 good, four bad. Right. And uh, I never could draw. Thank God I met Jeannie. It took me six months, and uh, she drew them down to what I have this video image. I never forgot with these people, because these people were so friendly. Now, when you say you have this video image, did you what, video them? Is that what you did? Of what they look like in my mind. Oh, in your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I never forgot them. Okay. Okay. Good. You want to go to the next one? Yeah, sure. These are the spiritual blue women. Wow. Look at that. Amazing. You got that? Right. Okay, uh, they're seven and nine feet tall. They're from another dimension. They love our planet. These people can float off the ground. 
They got uh, three fingers, four toes. They're um, is they call them the blue people? He's got like a blue veil, right. and just super friendly people. That's the craft they fly in. It's kind of almost like the blue warriors. It's got uh, eight red lights around it, one on each end and three on each side. These are giant crabs. These these crabs are as big as a football field. But uh, when they're lit up at night, it's the most beautiful crab. There's a planet out there. I was told uh, they didn't give the planet, but the star people, engineers, they do nothing but design these crabs for all these uh, different uh, star people. Now, she she looks very ornate. Yeah. So they are, did they say we're like more than they're from another, another dimension? Di or? Another dimension. Okay. They don't give the, she didn't give the dimension. Okay. You want to go to the next one? Sure. Next one are the orange people. That's what they look like. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> they they look kind of like Wookies, right? <laughs> yeah, they, I, I'll go with that, over. <laughs> I I wonder if 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 uh, that that's where Star Wars got a lot of its ideas. Uh, it, it could have. I don't know. <laughs> you know, they they this sort of this has the flavor of the bar at scene at Star Wars, right? Or not? Yeah. That doesn't it? It does. <laughs> but these these guys are from another galaxy far away. They love our bread. They fly in a silver giant. It looks like a giant donut. Huh. And they're uh, they got uh, black eyes. They're real hairy. Their bodies are orange. Um, they're uh, Real intelligent. They're from another dimension. Yeah. I I wonder what the exophino type is. It looks like a giant squirrel or something. Is that what they look like? Yeah, to a point you could say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they they're they they could be like Wookiees, right? Or something. Yeah. But they're but they're more intelligent than Wookiees or are Wookiees. Did, did did they speak or was it all telepathic? Telepathic. Well, I'm uh -huh. a telepathic. I'll tell you the ones that can speak our language and it can speak both. Yeah. And it's four to four to ten feet tall. Wow. And and wow. And what what was their message? Same same as the other ones or same, same as the other ones. Okay. There are, we got we got a lot of you know. There's 28 friends of mine. There are friends. We got yeah. a lot of people out there that are ready to protect these humans yeah. down here. Earth. Right. Now our our next one is kind of an yeah. an, an unusual exophenotype, right? Right. And we're going through these insects and that when I went just briefly let everybody know, we got tiny ones down here. And there's I something see. and there's something to this. Uh totally actually met one of my star people and this is the one he met. Oh, so, Tolek met, met yeah. this star person. Uh -huh. Yeah, the worm people. He calls them slimy guy, and I've touched them. They are slimy. Wow. This, this is the worm people. The worm people. Wow. From the 12th dimension. Correct. Huh. Okay, and and so how how did you meet them? Uh, same way, they've got mm -hmm. different crafts that they fly in. Um, <clears throat> they're uh, brown and green. It's a split color on them. These guys are six feet tall, and they're always around water. Believe it or not, these giant worm people are always around water. Mm -hmm. they, got, they got bases down here. Plus, you know the size of our worms. Uh, mm. 
when me and my late father were going through this, because as we go through more, you'll meet some other insects. We knew we had tiny ones. I'm just going to use the year 1800 because all the big ones came down here for the purpose to tell the, the little ones what their purpose was. There's a mountain in Peru that only from above you can see a giant drawing of a chimpanzee and a giant bird. Now, not these guys, but as I get into the ant people, when we get in there, uh, what what was said about two in, uh, a giant bee, friendly giant bee from another planet, six to eight feet tall, and a giant grasshopper, six feet tall, that these exist. Well, after what me and my late father seen here, because there's more of them, uh, it just blew our mind because we knew right. what you know what size they were down here. Yeah. Well, there, there's been multiple witnesses to. Praying Manus people. They're in. Yeah, we met them. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so you interacted telepathically with the worm people, or? Yeah, telepathic. Okay. Uh, now here we go. Now this is kind of an un, an unusual person. Would you like to bring the next? Uh, um, uh, introduce the next. Group the next exophenotype. Casper the ghost is real. Yeah. These are these are green glowing people. They are they Yeah, uh, could 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 you put it up against the? Uh, that's yeah. them. Yeah. That's the craft they fly in. Okay. <clears throat> They're from another dimension. They talk telepathic. They have these real deep. Uh, Red, red eyes, they got like a green glow around them. They float and they, they remind you of a ghost, but they, they speak telepathically. They're very friendly. They've talked about what the other uh, star people talked about uh, for the information to let us know there wasn't just one type. There's many that are, have bases here, are ready to come here to help the humans protect us and uh, this is the information we got from them hmm. you know um, it was a great education it's been a hell of a ride uh, you know you don't have to go to school for this and I've had my other life but this life is still going on to this day right okay so uh, you know so you still believe that each of these exophenotypes is a genuine exophenotype. It's not like one basic species that's putting on these different costumes, kind of. Uh, correct. The only ones that, and that's the four bad ones, which you'll see uh, that can, can, can do the, what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, so now we'll go on to uh, this snake next people. being, which is, uh, oh, the snake people. Snake people. Hmm. They don't look like snakes. They have an em a snake emblem on their suit. But this is what their race is called. Hmm. Uh, do, do they have, well, they, they actually look more like humans. Yeah. They're, uh-huh. Uh, -huh. uh be, because when you think of snake people, you think of a reptilian. Yeah, that was the first thing. Hmm. Did they say where they were from? Or? <clears throat> These guys are uh, six feet tall. Mm -hmm. they got three fingers. They're uh, pale in skin. They're from another dimension. And uh, they got purple eyes. And they have like a little goatee on their chin. There's an antenna that's actually built into their that snake-like cap thing that they wear hmm. with the antenna. These guys speak telepathically. They they don't really they're not considered bad. They don't really have our best interest. Uh, but they they came with with that kind of message. It was different than the other ones we we've come up with. To this point. What is what is their message? 
their message is we're destroying ourselves and in a way we're going it's 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 not too long that you know we're going to uh kill ourselves uh, what, what we're doing and uh they they love this planet i can yeah. see why everybody comes to this planet because yeah. i got to see it coming in it's the most beautiful planet yeah uh, you, you ever ever seen so they are they're not particularly concerned about the human race no, no. yeah okay the next ones are the ones that you said. These are the praying mantis. Right. Now, these guys treated my dad bad. They, they Really? Yeah, they pushed my dad. I kicked one in the shin and ran behind my dad. Now, I've heard that they're supposed to be loving, spiritual. There has to be an east and a west, Alfred. But these praying mantis, <coughs> excuse me. We're bad. Hmm. <clears throat> they got three fingers, three toes, huge black eye. They're hideous looking. And remember, we got tiny praying mantis that are green down here. Yeah. So there, there there's another example there. Right. What was their message? Their message, they were kind of, that's why I considered them bad, what they did. They were like with the reptilians. The reptilians, you know, they wanted to take over this planet, right. uh, humanity. And uh, that's kind of where they were coming from. You know, they took the bread. They they, they didn't take us away, never to be seen. Uh, but uh, they were there for information. Yeah. But it, it wasn't the greatest information that we wanted to hear. Uh, and we knew now there was good and bad out there. But... As we went through this, in my case, 28 good, for bad, that's, that's a pretty good percentage. Yeah. I don't know how many are really out there, but we got 28 star people that care about this planet, care about us, and are going to make sure that we go through this move. And, we're, and everybody's going to meet these people when the big day comes. Okay. And the next ones, these are the reptilians. Okay. These uh, reptilians are from the planet Hydra and Draco. So the, these are not, these are the carnivores. These are the guys you're talking about, the ship shaker. They can change, they can make their self look like you. They can make their self look like anything. They, they actually stuck their hand all the way through my dad. They can walk right through you. They can walk through walls. These these guys do nothing but to put the fear of God in you. And when you look at them red, hideous eyes, uh, this is what's been controlling our planet for a long time. Mm -hmm. did, did, you, did, they, did you meet with them? Oh, yeah. Met one of them. They've got these two different cra size crafts. Uh, they didn't do anything bad to us they talked telepathically and they were saying how they were going to take over our planet there's a lot of them down here we've been controlling you for a long time um you know they weren't given uh anything good but we found out and as time went by i learned a lot about the, the reptilians the orion grays the praying mantis and uh, these guys that have been coming up in silver suits, them are the poor bad ones. Right. The Orion Grays don't have the big black eyes. Mm -hmm. you go to the next one? Or? Yeah, sure. Okay, I got a little guy. I don't know if you got a cat. Oh, these, yeah. Oscar the cat. <laughs> these, are the, these are the cat people. Nine to 12 feet tall. Yeah. Yes, they are. <laughs> Hmm. That's their craft. They talk telepathically. Okay. And and they're from the ninth dimension. Ninth dimension. And that's the craft that they fly in. And uh, you know, they're gonna be here. They uh have bases down here. Now I, I I've actually seen a photograph of a cat person 
a feline being, intelligent feline being, that was taken at Iseti, James Gilliland, at the Iseti Ranch off of Mount oh. Adams, Washington. Okay. It's it's a beautiful photograph. Okay. So I I've seen photographs of these beings. They're brown or blue in color. The the uh, the photograph that I saw was more brown. Okay. Wanna go to the next one? Yeah. Okay. These uh, there's no name for these, but they wouldn't even give us their name. These are monster-looking people. These people look like they uh, broke out of prison, but they're really got a hideous face. They're really friendly, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so these are good guys. These are good guys, believe it or not. And and they're from the tenth dimension. Correct. Now, what are do do they what's what's their basic message? It's the same thing. They're you know out of the twenty eight, it's the same message uh, that started with the uh, first people we met of what their job or uh, program is and, and where they come in the picture and what technologies we're going to learn from all different twenty eight that uh, as we're evolving with these, some are hideous looking, the Nordiques look just like us, uh, but this is the people that have educated me and my late father, and uh, these people are real. And, and, and you know, uh, I wish I had an hour for everybody to meet them, but eventually um, when we really get into this, people are gonna start seeing these different crafts and, and these people, these people are, are now, real. Yeah. Now, now, let me ask you a, a question. Why do you think uh, that all of these different uh, exophenotypes or classes or uh, species, uh, some of which are have diametrically opposite missions or purposes, reptilians and monster? looking people why do they think why do you think they met with you and your dad over the years i mean this is a huge enterprise i why, think that was, how do I, they coordinate that how who who's who's, who's well, driving know, all of this i don't know who's driving it it may be my fab four um uh, it may be that dwarf that you're going to see here that talked to my late father this was all planned you remember we were chosen people Right. Me and my late father did not ask for this. It started with my grandfather, then my dad, then me. When I came into it, see, we're Catholic. Right. My dad's old country. So yeah. his, they didn't believe in God. They yeah. were all by themselves. And then when I came in the picture, I had, it was me and God. And when my dad died, it was all me. And I, I, I made a quest to my father. I'm getting real close that I would find out the answers. Why we're here, what's going on. And with the help of my Fab Four and these other people that I'm showing you, uh, I'm getting the answers. And this was all set up for my late father and me. Right. And that's the only answer I could give you on that. Because I didn't ask for these guys. My dad didn't ask for them. Yeah. You know, who are we? We are you. You are me. Yeah. We're not, we're not the President of the United States. Right. Right. It in the course of the many years that you and your dad were doing this, uh, were you doing it kind of alone? Were were there any people that became interested? Was this something that, that you just did and nobody else knew about it? Yeah, nobody else knew. My my mom, my late mother, my brother and sister to this day <laughs> don't know my father and my, my wife with uh I'm sorry, people. So, so now is really the first time that you're sort of going public with it. Is that the case? Yeah, with you, I'm going public. I probably did it in my meetings because all my meetings are day. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. I have to get this out uh, to the people. Right. When well, I, when I, uh huh. Go ahead. When I spoke at Margie's uh, place, Debbie's, they were there. Yeah. I'll tell you an incident real quick. Uh, 
I was at Debbie's Ingemeyer's place at Cold Peppers, and Debbie was concerned because there was going to be some bad news I was going to give. And she had her cell phone in front of her, and she goes, let's call Margie K. So Margie K says exactly this. She sees the, my little three-inch human eyes and the Nordiques jumping up and down, saying the time is now, the time is now, because they want me to get the message out. That's what Margie K saw telepathically, because she's a, a, a top psychic remote viewer. They, she saw them in, an, in the image that they right. are, and that's what blew her mind. What blew Debbie and Margie's mind for MUFON people, Yeah. I don't have any missing time. Yeah. Okay? And that's what Margie is meeting a praying mantis that's a good one. She calls her Manny. I'm meeting my guys in person. Right. And they're coming on my TV. Right. All right? Good. Let let's let's just hold that there. We're gonna have a great uh, discussion at at the end of the program as to where you want to take all this. We're a little <clears throat> less than halfway through, uh, and we're all way into the second hour of the program. So I want to keep up our pace to have enough time at the end to have a discussion as where where we want to take this ring. Okay. Okay. So we're on to the next. And uh, uh, gonna, being gonna, here, yeah, people, the the what people, frog people, the frog people. <laughs> they all look like frogs. But they're frog yeah, people. so they're they're from the eleventh dimension. I see. Correct. And uh, they're about four feet tall. Four feet tall. They got like brown spots, dark, uh, huge dark green eyes. Uh, they're underneath the mountains on our planet and they're underneath the ground because they're doing something to help the soil on this planet. And that's their purpose and their, their uh, program to do this. Right. To take the right. Soil on Earth. Sure. Now, basically, uh, your and your father's way of meeting them and their essential message was. It's the same thing with the other 28, you know, uh -huh. they're here uh, to do what they're supposed to do uh, with the other 27 that's in this. And they're going to make sure that all humans, you know, we're, we're, we're going to uh, straighten this planet out. We're going to be a more beautiful planet, peaceful planet. All this nuclear, all this stuff's going to stop, you know. Uh, They've uh, done some things in the past that the the, the um, American people and other countries don't know, uh, the secret meetings, and uh, they know what they have to do. All the top leaders have been talked to, and uh, they're coming through the people now, and uh, they're going to intervene in everything. And these are the good ones. There's 28, okay? Now, you got other universes inner outer dimensions. I don't know how many, I know some of these that I just showed you from galaxies far away, okay? There's uh, barriers out in outer space that the great ones control. The only ones that get to go through the barriers are the Silver Legion. And the Silver Legion I never met, but I did hear this from my guys. They're a million strong, most of them are women, wear, you know, have wings, they're protectors of the universe, and I found out that they're protectors of planet Earth. So there you go. You got some more people that I never met that have uh, right. a piece of the pie here. Okay. Now, moving on here, it looks like we're up to some more hairy people. Yes, these guys are really hideous. And uh, they wouldn't give their name, so I just hairy people. They got the one ugly face, ugly red eyes. These guys are uh, eight feet tall. Oh, I got to show it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. You can see that. <laughs> I'd just like to see that now, Ellie Alfred. They're eight feet tall, got six fingers. They're real ugly but friendly. They got an orange glow around their, their body. They're brown and hairy, and uh, 
they're from another dimension. These guys are real friendly. And that's the thing. You look at these, just like the, the blue people, the orange people, they're super friendly. They're smart. You know, the technology. Right. Excuse me, I'm just going to... Hey, Joe. Yeah. So let's let's just move move forward here. And uh, now here here we have something different. These are hybrid children. They're half human, half alien. Mm-hmm. And and they came down from the ships. Yes, uh, they got uh, their hybrids. Half, like I said, half human, half alien. Their eyes cannot blink. Their real, their eyes are real large. The females look a lot like our females and us, and they got small bodies, um, black eyes. Others are blue. And and what the, message did they have? Their program. There's six million of these hybrids from what I get from my fad core that are programmed to come down here for us, uh, not, not to do anything wrong in case anything uh, major happens. Uh, you know, you got the blue war. These people know what they're supposed to do and uh, they're here to protect us. Even though these, uh, they're four to six feet tall. Now, you know yourself, now, I'm, I, I, I've retired from General Motors, and these cars, they come out with the name Hybrid. Yeah. I, I know where they got the word from. Uh, hmm. I got women in my mini room that have hybrid children. Hmm. They, they know it's theirs. They want to keep them. But the star people, these would be the bad ones, uh, would say you can't have her or him, but if you ever want to see them, We'll always let you touch them, whatever. But they know they're 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 kids, mm. and it's the way they uh, how they do the pregnancy is way completely different than us humans. Mm. Uh, Nardiques are like that. Uh, they'll stand up and hold their hands up high. This is what the Nardiques would tell me. And it's all thought. They're mm. real spiritual people, and this blue ball like appears. And when it disappears, there's a there's a baby boy or a baby girl, hmm. and they have sex like we have, but they don't have the child come out of their woman like our one. It was really interesting. It was an ed education, like I said. We would pick up. That's what I wanted to say real quick about the uh, circle grays when we were on this craft. I was 12 years old. We saw these fiber optic cables or wires around a craft with these real vines, because these guys are vegetarians. And we're sitting in these weird colored seats, and there, there's handprints like this for one to do something to grab. But here's this circle gray sitting down. He takes this vine, he sticks it inside of his hand. That's when I nudge my dad. And I go, Dad, he's feeding himself. It's just little things we would pick up. That's all I wanted to say on that. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Unreal. Go to chlorophyll. 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 <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, moving on here. This is something out of a out of yeah. a costume ball here. Uh, the Roman, these are the biblical people, the Egyptian people. Uh, wow. These people speak our language and uh, can talk telepathic. Um, they have uh, long noses, all these colored clothes. This is a husband and wife, but there's many that were on this craft. Um, they're from a galaxy far away. They've been watching our year, our our, our planet for years, <clears throat> and uh, you know they know that we know what we're supposed to do. Uh, you know, I have to get this information out, which I'm doing, and to, to turn everything around. I I say this in my meetings because all my meetings are taped, so people can go and watch and uh, even see more of it. 
nobody ever got to see what they look like. So I got one hell of an artist, and because uh, I can't draw, and now I finally am finally getting this out to what they look like. Now, they, now, now, why do you think that we have an extraterrestrial species from a faraway galaxy that is dressed up that way? Well, we got the biblical times, two thousand years ago with Jesus Christ times. You know, uh, this was in our our life. Okay, these are human-looking people. These people were smaller. You know, <coughs> these people were like uh, four to six feet tall. But uh, but but I mean, they have very very advanced technology. Sure. Why why would they dress up in in a fashion that was in fashion? Uh, that's the era that they were. That's the era they're from, the biblical times. Oh, yeah. they're they are from. So they are time travelers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, but they're from a faraway galaxy. That don't make any difference, you know. Uh, oh, they are they are time travelers. Okay. Right. There is a time traveler in here. You, you're going to meet him too. Okay, good. Now I understand. And they are here. Why again? Uh, in the same program of what the the other ones are saying. You know, the good ones. <clears throat> They're going to be here when the, when these people come, just like what I'm showing you here. And there's 28. Mm -hmm. These are different crafts. Many right. will come, you know. And then we get into this. I don't know how many more are really out there. You know, this is going to be a big uh, dramatic, whatever word you want, magnificent time when this this happens. Right. You know, uh, I forget NASA the the military. Uh, there's nobody going to be able to uh, just put a halt on this. Right, you know? right. Now, uh, to keep on with uh, with with the um, with the movement here, this next category is really unusual. These are neat guys. These are the they're called the busted beak people. Okay. Uh, they got a beak all the way around, and the front one is busted. That's why they're called the busted beak people. Ah. And they fly in a triangle craft and uh, this other craft that I'm showing you here. These guys can float. They talk telepathically. If I ain't mistaken, the uh, Tupelo, Mississippi incident with Hicks and the guys that was on the pure fishing, yeah. These could float. I think these were the, the ones that took them guys. I see. They're eight to ten feet tall. They're really intelligent. They're very nice, but they're in this program. You know, we're going to be seeing these guys. There's many, and they have bases down here. Okay, and they're uh, from the eighth dimension. Is that it? <clears throat> eighth dimension. Yeah, they're eight to ten feet tall. Okay. And that was the crap that they planted. This is be the last of the bad people that I'm about to show. You ready for them? Oh. These are the space suit people in silver suits. They have a uh, a light for a face. When that light blinks, they got an antenna. Uh, they talk telepathically. I see. So when you say that they're they're not good, uh, they don't, they don't why have, do you they, say that? They don't have our best interest. I see. And they told us that, mm -hmm. that we we couldn't wait to get off their craft. No, all the bad ones. They like our planet a lot. Of course, all the bad ones do. Um, they're from another dimension. They fly in a boomerang uh, type. Uh, craft and uh, right. that other one you see. Uh, they're just they they hope we don't make it. Right. And you know, that's the only thing I can really say about them. Other than they're you know this is what these people look like. And uh, the next one is you ready for that? Oh yeah. This is the dwarf. That met with my late grandfather in Yugoslavia. It's right, not, right. It's, it's not the exact one, but they live in trees on their planet, 
in the trees. They, they, you know, have bases down here. They got bases, uh, you know, where they came from. But uh, when he would leave my grandfather, he'd go in the front of the woods and just disappear. And he could go into another dimension. Right. The thing that these guys told us, they're from the seventh and eighth dimension, um, besides the same messages. To, to, and my Fab Four did the same thing. For us to start learning about the dimensions that are down here on planet Earth to go into. Uh, they're, they're not only safe havens for us when something really bad happens. There's other things about them and other and easier places of going from here. That, that, that there are dimensions on Earth that are safe? Yeah. That's, that's, that's very interesting because uh, you've, you've read my book, The Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse, right? I'm on page 76. Oh, good, good. So... <laughs> So what they're saying is that there's a dimensional ecology on Earth mm -hmm. that you can find safety in. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. They also could, talk. About, could you talk more about that? Well, it's for us to understand where they're at, what is, is there. And uh, they even talked about, even my guys, that if anything really happened like in Armageddon, I'm just saying this. They would come, there would be two safe haven dimensions on the left and the right that we would see to go into, and they would come and take us off of this planet if something chaotic did happen here and bring us back. But they want us to start learning about these dimensions. Um, what they talk about us humans, they're right on the money. We were in the sun a lot. Okay, and you know this for a fact, the cells that die, that give us old age, old age, you know, our, supposedly our scientists are being now to correct and reverse that, that will be our immortality, because the immortality of this little guy, he's 1,200 years old. Wow. Uh, the uh, Nordiques uh, lived to be 1,800, and the uh, Serpo Grays lived to be 350 years. It's the immortality that these, the technologies people have. Well, you know yourself, Albert, there was people living 400 to 1,200 years old back in the biblical times. Yeah. What did these people know? And they have, a lot of them have two sons on their planet, but they're masters of the underground. And this is another thing, uh, a way in the future that will help humans down here. And... They talked about 4D, 5D. When you get into six dimensional, we're a complete different creature and there is no bad. It is all good. Up until the sixth dimension, we still have good and bad. And they also say, because we are grown of, it's all money down here, greed, disease. Well, soon, in the next 11 or 10 years, there will be no money. We will be just like them. We, we, we will be trading energy. That's what they do. And the technologies that these people, these people exist, these people are going to help us. You know, uh, it's been the greatest education in my life. I've had 13 years of education, but I tell you, I've met some great people and I've met four bad ones, but... Uh, when the people meet these people, you don't have to sit on more. Right, right. Wow. So th this is how it all started with your grandfather. Mm -hmm. This is the guy that started everything right there. Yeah. Okay. Look, look, look kid. Yeah. Yeah, moving on here. Okay. This next... Uh, <clears throat> these are some funny guys here. We're looking. These are just sil silver metallic people. They can fly. Wow. You can see their face and their head like because they got wings. Mm -hmm. These are one of the good ones too. These, you know, they come down here with the same message. They have bases down here. Um, 
They're anywhere from five to six feet tall, and they can fly. And it looks like a baseball, and it's a huge red light that actually goes around the craft at night, and it shoots out different colors. Uh, you know, it's just amazing to see these amazing crafts. You, you know, the fear sets in when the door opens or what's coming out of here, but uh, you're already, as a human, you're in such a, from a fear to at all because the magnificent craft and then uh, they talk telepathically and right away you know they're letting you know we're, we're friendly and, right. and, and it, it's just an awesome feeling you know compared to the four bad ones yeah because the feelings, the feelings we had with them was like you know we uh, well we thought the reptilians were going to eat us we, we thought it was over um uh, the next one oh sure these guys are real weird looking guys. Hang on, let me get hold sure. that. Okay. Got that? Yep. Now these guys You you call them the star people with black black uh, pants and a X vest. They have a hood and a cape. They have a ray gun and that rifle looking over his shoulder with some kind of a laser weapon. Huh. These guys are from another uh, dimension. They are protectors of the universe and believe it or not, protectors of planet Earth. Huh. There's a people. There's a lot of these people have interest down down here that have been here even before us. But uh, you know, it's our time to evolve. I get the same message from them. I mean, my dad did too, and uh, you know, they're gonna. They have they have bases here. They're gonna be here to uh, make sure everything goes smooth. Right. Okay. Next one is twenty three. These are the little white pale human eyes. They're childlike human eyes. Yeah. You get that now. They almost look like hybrids. Yeah. I would say between that and a, and a, and a, and a child type, um, of course, they're a lot older than what, you know, they look that young and even these as hybrids. Yeah. Um, they have these blue cape. <clears throat> they're from a, a planet far away. This a uh, Huge diamond shaped craft that's really neat at night. That's what they fly in. <clears throat> they got uh, big blue eyes, something like the hybrids, but uh, same message what their purpose is and their program to do when uh, you know the time comes. So uh, we'll go to the next one. And uh, again, we have tiny ones down here. These, wow. are, these are the end people. If you look up wow. the, the leaders have wings. Not all of them have wings. If you look up the Hopi Indians, these uh, ant people are masters of the underground. They uh, fed and helped the Hopi Indians. Right. Right. And you know how tiny the ants are down here. And they fly. There was a pilot. I was reading it when he was asked from the ground floor, what are you seeing? And he said exactly, I see a giant ant. And what it is, they have a giant ant craft looking like an ant. And if you, the other craft, if you take a turtle out of the shell, that's what it looks like. Hmm. And now, they could, what, what, what size were the ant people? Six to seven feet tall. Wow. And were they friendly? Real friendly. They talk telepathically. They're from another dimension. And uh, you know how tiny the ants are down here. That's what I was talking about. In Colorado, of all places, back in the, whether it was the 1800s, when the big ones came down to tell the tiny ones their purpose and what to do, this is what educated me and my dad. You know, we're, we're trying to put two and two together. Giant ants, and we got... Once you got to look at a microscope on it, they're so tiny. What is going on here? 
well, there's something to this. Now, and, now, what what role do they play here on Earth? Oh, uh, that, that's a big time for, uh, for what they're doing underneath the ground. They have bases down here, even with the little ones. And all the worm people, cat people, you know, they're all into this. That's what I'm talking you got insects, you got different star people, uh, you got pe people that look like uh, Bigfoot, mm -hmm. the Cyclops guy, uh, the hairy guys, hairy monster guys, the orange people, the blue people. This is what we met. You know, these people, we met, these are insects. Mm. Six to seven feet tall. Me and my father are in a circle on this craft surrounded by seven giant ants. We're ready to think it's over. They're going to eat us. You know, this ain't, this ain't a movie. This is the real deal. And then when you hear them talking telepathically, we are your friends. Now, when I found out about these guys, they don't touch dials in their craft. They use their eyes. Hmm. So when their eyes blink, it's dim, the lights are bright. Hmm. When, when they're hitting the control, because they're telling us, when they hit the controls, it's with the eyes. They'll click it three times with the left to take off, three times for something. You know, they're explaining that everything they do in that craft is with the eyes. With the eyes. We, hmm. we know, we learn a little bit about each one. Now, uh, where are these from? Uh, they're from another dimension. They don't give the dimension. But they have bases down here. They're already down here. So down. The, these are from the insectoid exophenotype. There you go. The next one is very interesting, whether you people are going to believe this or not. This is a real angel hmm. by the name of Catherine. Catherine. Yes. That's the name she told me. Now, is she an angel or a star person with wings? She is an angel with wings. They they got bases down here. They've been down here for uh, many many years, and they're going to be down here when the big day and and and, and, and to help us. Now, um, uh, do do they all converge on twenty seventeen, or is this like? It's my Fab Four. Uh, no, my Fab Four are the ones that venge on 2017. Now, these people that I met, these other 27, besides the four bad ones, you know, I'm sure they're in this. You know, they're all programmed for what's supposed to take place down here. You know, all these people will, they're well, a lot of them are already here. These uh, angels ha have bases down here, okay? They're always around water and sunlight. They're well, I, I, what I'm saying is, are you willing to give yourself some wiggle room? Yeah. I mean, beyond so that it's not 2017. It's like a oh, living yeah. date. Yeah, I'm just giving you the date that they're telling me. As a human, yeah. I'm kind of agreeing with them because, you know, we heard so much. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a little bit longer than that, but... Right. One, so thing yeah. one thing they're telling me of that year, it's a major year. It's a Something major year. Has, something's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Be, because the dark side is also putting out the year 2017 as to when they bring down their hammer. So I, I'm just kind of, you know. I understand. It's all yeah. this interdimensional psychological warfare going on. Right. Okay. So. The next ones are my little three inch, part of my fab four, my little three inch human eyes. They're yeah. from the fifth and seventh dimension. So these are three inches tall. Three inches tall. I've had them on my hat, my forearm, my hand. Uh, there's ones that call me, they're real high pitched. They call me Raymond, Raymond. But uh, uh, they're in brown uh, spacesuits with bubble, clear bubble uh, helmets. And uh, they have the power to. Make some of the crop circles. It takes them seven to ten seconds. They also have the power to shrink you to your size. They are the yeah, wait, 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 wait a minute. They have the power to shrink you down to three? Three inches, yeah. Yeah. How do you know that? Because uh, they want me to go to their plant so bad. I have a cat, 
And if I if I go in this way, I would be scared as a human being to if I didn't come back my size and I came back three inches, Jerry Lee be chased me all over the house and he'd probably eat me. So that the cat. Yeah, that kind of just set that off. Matter of fact, the very first sighting, it's a little bit bigger than a basketball, was metallic. That's the object. Then they uh, fly in a, uh, look like a acorn craft and uh, almost like a football. And them are the three crafts that they fly in. Uh, well, look at the uh, Stephen Greer thing with the six inch uh, entity or whatever. Know, embryo. No, we, we, we now have photographs. Uh, this is the Mars Anomaly Research Society. We have photographs from the Mars rovers. And uh, there are two and three inch people that are photographed in the Mars rovers tracks. Some of them have gotten killed. So there are two and three inch humanoids on the surface of Mars. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, the next one, uh, again, this is part of my fab four. These are the circle grays with the big black eyes. These are very friendly. These guys are vegetarians. Now, uh, now, now you call them the, the circle grays rye. The what? Why do you call them the circle grays? Serpo. They're from the planet Serpo. Oh, oh Serpo. S-E-R-P-O. Oh, right. Sorry. I, I understood circle. Okay, oh, Serpo. Right. They're three to seven feet tall. I met them once with my late father, twice by myself. And uh, we, you know, they drink this um, green slime because they were saying we couldn't drink this. It would kill us. One thing I want to also say, just caught my eye on it. When we came out of the craft, I'm 12 years old. My nose is bleeding. So is huh. my dad. And it's, it looks like a chain necklace. It's not touching the ground, Alfred. It's going, right. back, it's going back into the next nostril. Wow. So I'm, look, I'm looking at my dad. We're hitting ourselves in the chest. We thought we were going to die right there because it had something to do with radiation and whatever uh, magnetic field. We're not in spaces. We're, we're, you know, we're in T-shirts and jeans. We're not astronauts, you know. I grew up with Star Trek, you know. We're not going to them. They're coming to us. Right. But uh, these are, are very friendly. Uh, serp they're part of my Fab Four. I'm going to go to the next one. Yep. This is another part of my Fab Four. These guys are brilliant, friendly. These are the elephant people. You know what the elephants look like down here? The elephant people. Right. Yep. They have a red pyramid pyramid patch on their shoulder. They're in a black jumpsuit like and you see their face. And they have a trunk or something like an elephant. Uh, they're ten feet tall. They're from the thirteenth and fourteenth dimension. Wow. Special friends of mine. They're part of my fab four. And uh, these are the guys I meet every two months. Oh, uh, I do. Every two months. About every two months for vital information, yeah. Yeah, was, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once we get to the to the Fab Four, we'll go more in depth, and you'll tell us about your your interactions with them and okay. what they're telling you. Okay. These are other part of my Fab Four. These are the Nardis that look just like us. Right. Okay. The women fly their crafts, and they're they're real. Uh, they're built real good. They're real strong. Now, yeah. where where are these from? They're from another dimension. They wouldn't give the planet. Uh -huh. They're five to seven feet tall. These are beautiful looking people. And, uh, you know, I, there was a lady, she worked for NASA. She, she drew, I uh, can't think of her name. She came to my meeting twice. She's actually met this one, supposedly this one Nordic they love our donuts, and she, of all places, she met him at a donut shop. <laughs> and uh, they were the only ones that changed the menu on, on us. And I bring, we always bring, or I always bring seven loaves of bread, but I brought the Nardiques two dozen donuts. And they do love our donuts. Wow. But How they, strange all, is that? And it is. They look just like us. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say is, we have relations out there, and I don't know who I'm related to. 
Some of my people are related to the Pleiadians, some to the Greys, but, you know, we're going to find out a lot of things that uh, were hidden from us. I see. So uh, here's another bad person. This is the uh, Orion Greys. This is number 30. Well, I got two more. Yeah. They don't have the big black eyes. They work with the Hydra and Draco reptilians. And, now, uh, now, what can you tell us about them? They're uh, the fourth bad ones. They have no interest. They uh, are probably what you were talking about, looking to be different at times than what they are, you saw them there. And the, rept the, the bad ones can do all this. The 28 that I met are real. I've touched these people, even the ant people. Right. I mean, these ant people <laughs> are not, oh, they're real. And the 31st one, believe it or not, is a time traveler from the year 2035. His name is Neil. Huh. And the only thing I can tell you about this guy, he's friendly, is somehow they fly in a crank, uh, black triangle crank, messed up, and they need body parts, and that's the reason they're coming here. Wait, could could you say that again? You you've you they, you've got a time traveler named Neil from twenty thirty five. They messed up. I don't know what DNA, whatever, but they they need body parts. This is what I got from him. Oh, is he a time traveler from twenty thirty five? Yes. Earth. Yes. Oh, huh. that's what he said. I don't know. Again, I don't know about that. You know. And the last one, and this one freaked me out because of this movie, Cowboys and Aliens. That, that's why. These are the Seahorse people. We got tiny ones in the ocean. They're from the 23rd planet. 23rd they, planet. They're, uh, you mean the, the uh, 23rd planet around the sun or what? Uh, they're 40 to 50,000 light years from planet Earth. Oh, I see. Their, their planet was dying. They fly in a dragonfly craft. Hmm. They're they're two to ten feet tall. They got legs wow. too. Wow! But they actually can float off the ground. The one I met was brown, but uh, when I watched the movie Cowboys and Aliens, what blew my mind? There's a dragonfly craft in that movie. Where did they get that? Now I was supposed to see him again, but like I said, his planet was dying. And he he said he would get back. He never did. So I don't know what happened. But they uh, he he did say they were forty to fifty thousand light years from planet Earth. Wow. And that's all thirty two. Wow. Now let's go to your fabulous four. All right. And you'll tell us what each of each of those are, and you'll give us the whole. Who, what, when, where, and why on those? You got everything there, Al? You got it all? Yeah, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know. They, my, my, yeah, why don't you put it up there? Okay. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Okay, what's in this room is my Fab Four. That's the Nordiques, the Serpo Grays, the Elephant People, my little three inch human again. This is a giant red, sometimes it looks like a pyramid, and this room is where we meet. And and where is that room? It's in the craft. They're either oh, in, in the craft. Yeah, they're either in a giant brown or white cigar shaped object or a giant flying saucer. And every two months, uh, you know, I would meet them. There's dials on this table, and there's a it's a crystal, um, pointy crystal, and a, and a crystal vase that the Nardique would stick that crystal into. And when he did that, that back wall yeah. would turn into like a drive-in theater. He, wow. would show me, he would show me past, present, and future videos. Wow. Well, so he showed me one. I'll never forget it. Uh, we have the Gateway Arch here. And the Mississippi River downtown, and uh, it was daylight, and he was showing me future video. 
it showed that the Arch Fallen, the Mississippi Rising, and flooding the downtown area. The, the, the streets were sinking. I, this is broad daylight. I saw an ambulance and a fire truck. The buildings were falling. People were jumping. People were getting killed. Now, when this video was over, the Nardik looked at me. <clears throat> he called me Raymond. So he says, Raymond, he goes, this is going to happen, but we will intervene. Oh. So. One more how, how long ago was that meeting? Would you say that one was about uh, a year ago? Oh, so was that soon? Yeah, because they show past and present, and uh, like when uh, the when they showed me my late father, Hitler to wars and planet Earth. The education was this: Hitler, bad person, wars, stop the wars, beautiful planet totally on fire. Did somebody press the button, and it was nuclear, you know, and yes. that's that's what we had to learn, and the the learning was to go back to the people, which is now is stop the wars, stop the nuclear power plants, stop anything nuclear. Look at happened in Chernobyl and Fukushima. It's an example of what the star people been telling our top people for years. You're destroying this beautiful planet. Right. There's people down here, Albert, you know this for a fact. They're playing God with our lives. And we all we have to do is turn everything around. And that's what we're they know we're doing. And now, these, now uh, yeah, now 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 you say you meet with them every two months. You I mean every two months you go up into the room and and there's a briefing or something? Yeah, they they give us give me a meeting of what's going on because uh, they know I have my meeting place of all places in Bono, and I get out whatever information that they give me. I was sick for uh, about five months because I have uh, Agent Orange prostate cancer, borderline diabetic. I'm on this Luprin shot. Uh, I used to get it every three months. It's every six months. It's real potent. This is what keeps me alive. You know, compliments the United States uh, military when I was in the service when they sprayed us with Agent Orange, 67, 69. But they're trying to work with me. And, uh, you know, my my uh, PSA was 0 0.02 and it jumped to 9.6. That was danger. You know, because when I first found out about it, it was 14.15, which is really bad. But the Luprin shot keeps the cancer contained, keeps it from spreading, keeps it from coming back. If I don't get that shot, I die. It's as simple as that. And, uh, you know, I don't want anything to happen to where it does go crazy and spread. But the star people are working with some. They're actually working on a protective shield for me to go into from my car to the craft in the room. Because what people don't understand, and they're, they're realizing it even more, these people are coming from far away, and we're both touching and hugging, okay? And there's germs. Don't get me wrong. They're crap, crap, all these crafts are real clean. I don't care what anybody says. you got germs, and you got a magnetic field. you got radiation. All this is there. And the, the biggest thing on humans, we are not in spacesuits, T-shirt and jeans. When the abductees are getting abducted, whether it's a jacket, whatever, they're not in spacesuits. These people don't realize until later on, you know, as humans, something's not right. And that's when I got with my guys because we were meeting on my TV. And I said, until you guys come up with some kind of protection, we're going to meet on this TV. And they did because there was a good six-month gap. Um, I'm going to meet in my notes uh, sometime next week. Now, now, uh, in terms of your last meeting, can you tell us, uh, you know, uh, uh, in so far as you can, what what you talked about and what information you can share with us? 
Well, the biggest thing that they, they talk about the most in the meeting is they know about the greed and disease down here. They know uh, who's been running a show down here. You know, uh, the reptilians. Uh, but all that's going to change. And that's why, you know, these 28 good people I met, I showed you the four bad. I don't know how many more is really out there. But these people are ready. Uh, and the Fab Four, you can kind of say they have a, uh, they're higher beings than some of these, and um, they run a show. And these other ones that I just showed you, you know, are programmed and ready when the process that we go through from third to fourth dimension, not just then, but to even help us now as we go through this to change everything, turn everything around. Because if we don't, Planet Earth will be here. We keep going on the path that we're going, spraying everything. And you know, back in my time, and I'm sure you were there, Alfred, we didn't spray them tomatoes. You know, now we're spraying things that in a 20 year period is killing us. Right, right. Now, you say that when you go there, then you have meetings in which you download. Uh, some of the information yeah. and can people access these meetings do they have to come to them physically or do you put them online someplace or what the, the only thing I uh, Joe and Edna you guy with uh, UFO hub that net yeah we're a good friend of mine and Joe uh, is uh, is DM, DMS.com they tape all my meetings live okay now when their meetings are done whatever said when I'm speaking with the messages my guys are saying, unless it's a speaker I got, uh, that'd be on there. Whatever the information is, yeah. they can go to the past shows. Okay. Now, where where can people access these online? Uh, UFOhub.net. UFOhub.net. Net. Right, net. Right now, they would see I did a live story that's. Probably got about 1,800 views on it. I just did, because he's got all update equipment, UFO Hub, that, that, my live story over, part one, with part two, what I just did with you. Yeah. That's all ready. And when that goes up, they'll go to ufohub.net. They'll see that. Right now, they can just see my, uh, it's about a year, I guess, or whatever, the old live story. And my previous past meetings. Yeah, yeah. So that if people wanted to follow the meetings, the downloads that you get in meetings, they can go there and then watch what watch each meeting. Yeah, they can watch it live, but if they miss it, yeah, they're taped, and they can okay. always watch it later on. Yeah, I see. And you know, the date and times of the meetings announced, or uh, central time is seven. Uh, Central till 9:30 p.m. I have the meeting actually till 11 o'clock, but yeah, okay. it's seven and, to nine. And and what dates are these on? Or, or always, just... it's always the first Monday of the month. Okay. If they want to see a great meeting, you're going to be there September 1st. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am the guest. Well, I mean, I I feel very humbled uh, coming in with my little you know offering there. <laughs> Hey, it's a pleasure and honor. You know, you know. I mean, I, I am just a human from Earth. You understand that? <laughs> You're a great human. You're a smart human. And you, I'll tell you, I did yourself because this book, a lot of people are getting your book, too, because oh, uh, uh, everybody should read it. It's You get it on Amazon. It's $12 and a penny. Should be, it's 16 bucks. Yeah, and yeah. I, no, no, we, I, I, and if you want it in Kindle, we, we got it down to the price of a latte at, at Starbucks. <laughs> so, I mean, people who do Kindles. So, so tell me, uh, 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 so, uh, so what are the Fab Four saying? I mean, are we going to make it? We're not going to make it? I mean, what what's going down? As far as I know, 
And I, I believe in these guys. These guys have been friends of my property. We're going to make it, and they're going to make sure we make it. And these people, uh, you know, I'm blessed. Um, my late father, I'm blessed to have two great parents. My mother was never in this, um, but they gave me great morals to be a giver and to stand tall when something's wrong. And, you know, I'm a fighter. But uh, to have these uh, gray scar people from other dimensions, you know, plant syrup or whatever, backing us up and being my friends, my late father, where it started with my late grandfather, you know, we were chosen people. You know, when I say this, there's three, there's two of us, me and my dad. There's millions on this planet. But there's a lot of people on this planet that don't know what's going on. And, uh, you know, there was things taken away from us. We're going to find out these answers. The American people are not stupid. And, uh, you know, I'm a messenger, and I will continue to do this for my late grandfather and my dad to get the answers. And uh, for all my idols that are past, you know, Alan Hynek, uh, Adam, Adam Ski, Keel, Kilo. You, Stanton Freeman, you guys are my idols. Wow. And, uh, you know, I I got to thank Lisa M. Harrison from Sydney, Australia, because she opened the doors for, for me to, you, you're such a great friend now. And then you uh, opened the doors for me for Tolly. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so, Alfred, you, you're just such a great friend, and it's a pleasure and honor to know you. Oh, oh, thank you. Likewise. Well, t tell me, um, how can people who who a want to contact you contact you, and b what's you you've already said that ufohub.net is the best way for them to access. If somebody really wants to, I can give them my email. Yeah, sure. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. It's Kasi K O S S E E K O S S. E, -E. E, e baby b a b y forty seven at gmail dot com. Oh, good, and and you will uh, just uh, send me that, and we'll and we'll put that in the um, in the uh, video so that people will will have it so that they can contact you. Here you go. Good, okay. good. Uh, finally. Um, uh, given the three generations of your grandfather, yourself, I mean, your father, and now yourself, that have carried on this uh, tradition, this responsibility, and this tradition, um, uh, are there any uh, words or thoughts that you'd like to leave our viewing audience with? The only thing I would say is all this is real, you know, none of this is phony, and uh, this has been my life, and I'm doing it for two great people that ain't here no more. You know, I'm going to find out the answers. I'm getting real close, and uh, my Fab Four, they're, they're working, and, and they're going to help me, and they're going to help us. And uh, the, the technologies that these people that will be helping us humans, you know, uh, this world's going to turn around. It's going to be peaceful. It's going to be more beautiful. And it's going to take time, but we're going to have outside help like never before. Uh, I'm just a messenger, and I will get this out in my meetings or, you know, like with you, Alfred, or someone. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to get out there. And that's what I do, you know. I'm retired, uh, but I have my meeting place. And uh, I'm, I got some great people, Joe Palermo, UFO investigator, MUFON, Debbie Zingemeyer, Missouri director, MUFON, on a board of directors, Margie K, assistant director of Kansas City. These people interviewed me, and what they're amazed with, I don't know if I'm the only one or my late father didn't have any missing time, because we got a lot of people that are inductees. We always knew what was said, and the people that I 
showed you here, the bad ones, the ones that talk telepathic, the ones that speak our language, you know, the good ones. These are real people. We have, everybody has these 28 friends, even though they're my 28 friends, my late father. There are they're, they're people on planet Earth's friends too. Even my fat four, you know, these people are given, you know, vital information. They don't have to say nothing. They don't have to meet with me anymore. That That's one thing I, I, I it was about five months ago, face to face, because the Nordiques and the elephant people kind of run the show. I looked them straight up. Are you guys done with me? And their answer was, Raymond, you're the one. So it tells me that these people will be in my life for the rest of my life. Very good. Very good. Well, we, we certainly want to thank you for taking the time uh, to come here today. We, we want to thank you and your father and your grandfather for carrying out this great legacy and, uh, for, and you for being uh, honest and in integrity uh, for completing and carrying out this mission. <clears throat> with tremendous dedication and of course to your artist uh, for for carrying that out and uh, uh, um, and uh, you know and to your and to your crew <laughs> to your 32 <laughs> plus person crew <laughs> be they good be they bad they they've all participated yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean you know we've and so it's just an amazing uh, 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 phenomenon, and uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, I know that I'm thinking more and more about it. it. Just causes one to think a great deal about it, and uh, uh, I just want to thank you for allowing us to create this document that we'll put on the internet and share with even more people. And nope. um, yeah, no problem, Alfred. Anytime, anything for you. Know I, I'd be there for you. So yeah, yeah. Well, we 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 want to say that 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 we want to thank you, and we look forward to your coming on again as events develop in this area. Okay, no problem. I'll good be enough. there. I'll talk to you later. Be good. Good enough. Take care.